Well, good morning and welcome once again to the First United Methodist Church Sunday School class for January the 9th, 2022. Wow. Another year has rolled by, and here we are. Today we will find ourselves in Isaiah, and as we start our class this time this morning, I want to welcome all who come in and tune in. I appreciate you coming in. I consider you a friend. And so, friends, let's now open with a word of prayer. Father God, how great you are to have revealed so much of who you are to us. Help us, Lord, today as we study about another visit to the throne room by Isaiah to appreciate your greatness, to understand a little more about who you are and why you love us. We thank you, God, for the many ways that you touch our lives and call us. Lord, let us hear your call today and every day. Thank you, God, for this lesson. We pray for those who are ill and sick and who have been injured. We thank you, God, for your healing. We seek your will for this church and for our Sunday school class. Help us to be responsive to what you say to us. In Christ's name, we ask these things. Amen. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we find ourselves today in Isaiah. And before we get started reading the scripture, I feel inclined that I need to kind of explain a little bit about Isaiah. If you study Isaiah, the first thing you will notice is that it covers a substantial part of Judah's history. Uh, at least 200 years plus the time that he that he prophesied so we see then that that Isaiah covers a more than probably one lifetime uh, it is widely held by scholars I'm not a scholar that that this book was of Isaiah was written and divided into is is easily divided into three parts and reflects the three different time periods of Judah. Our lesson today comes from the first one through 36 chapters of Isaiah, which would cover the pre-exile uh, period of, of, uh, of Judean history. And the next chapters would cover the, uh, the period of time while they were actually in exile. And the third Period, the third Isaiah, as scholars are like like to say, he covers those last chapters from from um, that would be from 55 to 66 that would cover the uh, post-exile period. So we find ourselves today in Isaiah 6. Now, what we're hearing today is the call of Isaiah. And from there, we will, we will get into what that means for us as modern-day Christians today. But let's listen as we once again, just like last week when we saw John go into the, th or approach the throne room, we will see, we will see Isaiah approach the, the throne room. I want you to be, open your senses and see if you can hear and see and smell and maybe even taste what Isaiah experienced. Listen now to Isaiah 6, 1 through 13. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a high and exalted throne the edges of his robe filling the temple. Winged creatures were stationed around him. Each had six wings. 
With two, they covered their eyes. They veiled their faces or covered their eyes. With two, their feet. And with two, they flew about shouting. They shouted to each other saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heavenly force, forces. All the earth is filled with his glory. The door frame shook at the sound of their shouting and the house was filled with smoke. I said, mourn for me. I'm ruined. I'm a man with unclean lips and I live among a people with unclean lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of heavenly forces. Then one of the winged creatures flew to me, holding a glowing candle that he had taken from the altar with the tongs. He touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has departed. Your sin is removed. Then I heard the Lord's voice saying, Whom should I send and who will go for us? And I said, I'm here, send me. God said, go and say to this people, listen intently, but don't understand. Look carefully, but don't comprehend. Make the minds of the people dull, make their ears deaf and their eyes blind, so they can't see with their eyes or hear with their ears, or understand with their minds and turn and be healed. And I said, how long, Lord? And God said, until cities, until cities lie ruined with no one living in them, until there are houses without people and the land is devastated. And the Lord will, the Lord will send the people far away and the land will be completely abandoned, even if one-tenth remains there. They will be burned like a tabernacle or an oak, which when it is cut down, leaves a stump. Its stump is holy seed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is Isaiah 6, 1 through 13. Oh my goodness. So we see ourselves once again in the throne room. Last week, the seraphim were described much like they are here. Um, I find that very interesting. We time the scripture uh, in Isaiah from, from Uzziah's death, which would have been between 742 B.C. or as late as 736 B.C. This means that Isaiah was a, was a prophet, but he was also a priest in the temple. He would have had to have been at least 30 years old to be in the temple as a priest. So when we try to figure out we know that we start timing him, it's highly unlikely he lasted the 200 plus years. And it, it lends itself very uh, strongly to being more than one person who wrote that down, wrote the entire book of Isaiah. But it is undisputed that Isaiah probably wrote, that, that Isaiah wrote the first 36 chapters, including chapter six. So. We have, a, we have a pretty good idea. But imagine standing in the throne room. Now, obviously, he's had, this is in the form of a vision. Uh, we might even consider it a hallucination. I, I dare say that there are those among us who have had a vision from God. Maybe you can recall your vision vividly. I know that God has spoken to me very clearly. I, I am acutely aware of that. I have never had a vision in the throne room, but I have been acutely aware of God's presence. And I hope that you have too. 
And I hope that God has revealed things to you as we get to Isaiah's call story, which is exactly what this is. Isaiah is being called by God to deliver a message to the people of Israel. That was the purpose of a prophet, to deliver a message. It wasn't to be a, to go from the people to God, but rather to go from God to the people to communicate something. Now, what was he to communicate? And we could go through that, um, but before we before we get there, let's think about let's see what we can experience in that throne room. We've talked about the seraphim and the six wings and how they were saying almost exactly the same words that John recorded last week. Holy, 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 the Lord of heavenly forces. All the earth is filled with his glory. Wow. And then the door frame shook at the sound of their shouting. So we're getting this visual imagery that, that seemed that can be that can seem so real if we'll just open our senses to it. Can you imagine standing in a doorway and looking in at God? I can't. I would be fearful. I would be prostrate. I don't think I could look up to see what Isaiah saw. And he too realized it. Because he said, look, I'm ruined, I'm, I'm, I'm done for. It was very common during this time that if you looked on the face of God, you would die. So he knows, he thinks right then his days are done. So then comes one of the seraphim and comes and touches his lips with a burning coal from the altar where the incense burns. Can you smell it? And what about the searing heat of that coal touching his lips? But there's no mention of any injury, but it's a purification ritual. It means that Isaiah's sins are forgiven and that he is prepared now to speak for God. And then he, God say, ask a question. He didn't ask it of Isaiah. He just asked a general question. Well, who are we going to send? But Isaiah said, I'm here. Send me. And then God said to him directly, go and say to this people. Now, folks, what's important here is that he didn't say go and send, go and say this to my people. He said, go and say this to this people. God had already decided that, Israel, that Judah must be brought down just like Israel was and be returned and used up. Why? Well, folks, we could spend the rest of the class time studying the kings that did bad and how they turned to people against God and, and failed to follow God's lead and the prophets that came and tried to return them to, to uh, the right way. But God had had enough. I wonder, as God looks at us now, are we in that same position? How far are we from God having enough? I'm not smart enough to answer that. Don't, uh, don't attempt to. But I do know that, that we are not living in a godly time. And then let's listen to what he, God tells him to go and say. Listen intently, but don't understand. Look carefully, but don't comprehend. Make the minds of this people dull. Make their ears deaf and their eyes blind so they can't see with their ear, eyes or hear with their ears or understand with their minds and turn and be healed. God does not want them to turn around. God 
Jonah went to Nineveh with a message for the people of Assyria. And he didn't want to deliver that message because he was afraid that God, that they would listen to God and repent. And they did. But here, God doesn't want them to repent. He's had enough. He's now going to punish them. And he does with 70 years of exile in Babylon. Not through the Assyrians who had humiliated and attacked Judah and destroyed Israel, but rather through the Babylonians. But he does not want them to, he did not want them to understand and, and, re, and turn from, from him and return to him. And folks, the question that I had throughout as I prepared this lesson was why? Why didn't he want them to turn back? And I have, so let's, let's talk about that just a minute. I wanna to read to you from this, the teacher's book because I thought it, it explained it better than I could. Bear with me as I read this. Why would God wish to do this? God must have had in mind for the people something more important than healing. Some commentators speculate God might want it to preserve a divine truth for a future generation since this one has fallen so far from favor. Other commentators suggest that God wanted to use the Assyrian conquest to teach the people to return to God and some point to God's sovereign right to demand obedience. If Isaiah's generation would not listen to God, then God was under no obligation to preserve them. Ooh, imagine how Isaiah felt when he was told not to bring them to an understanding. How heavy a burden that must have been on him and instead of saying, instead of saying, well, Lord, how long do I have to do this? Or he asked, how long will his people be under this burden? And I said, how long, Lord? And God said, until cities lie ruined. People, that's a hard message, a hard message. But the message here is about Isaiah's call and being in awe of, of Isaiah's loyalty to God by continuing that. What do you think about Isaiah's call? Do you feel you've been called? Well, folks, whether we're called to lay ministry or full-time ministry, we're all called to a ministry for God. It's up to you to discern to what extent that ministry is. God has it put you here for a reason. I hope you've been about that. And I hope I am about that. God reveals to us things that he wants us to accomplish, whether it's in a vision as explicit as Isaiah's or whether it comes from that small, small voice in our heart that moves us Maybe it comes in a, in a pastor's sermon. Maybe it comes through the advice of a friend. But it comes. It comes. And it's our job to be aware and to listen for that message. Have you ever, has God ever given you a message that you didn't want to hear? Uh-oh. Are you still refusing to follow a message that God has sent you? Those are things that we need to ponder as we examine our lives. What about now? 
Is there something God's been telling you needs doing that you need to do? Folks, just like Isaiah, we have received a calling and we have received a message. Uh, I hope that you will take time this week to sing songs of praise, spend some time with God, and try to discern what it is God wants us to do in 2022. And now let's read the closing prayer that we find on page 69 in our Sunday, in our student book. Dear God, much like the days of Isaiah, we live in chaotic times. Forgive us when we fail to hear and respond to your call upon our lives and when we fail to live by your laws. Show us how to live faithfully each day in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Before I leave you today, I want you to know that uh, I still think God's encouraging me to teach these Sunday school lessons each week, and I'll continue to do so. Be kind this week. I think that'd be a great place to start. Just be kind. Because folks, it's just the right thing to do. Thank you for tuning in, and as always, if there's something that we can assist you with, please feel free to contact any of us at the First United Methodist Church in Brookhaven, Mississippi. Thank you for tuning in and being my friend.